One of the most striking things to those of us who followed the Derek Chauvin trial is how the hoopla surrounding the case from the Democrats and the media and the left bears no resemblance to what happened in the case itself. In fact, bears no resemblance to what the jury decided in the case. So the two main themes stressed in the media and by the Democrats have been number one, the theme of racism, and two, the theme of systemic police oppression. Here's Kamala Harris kind of reflecting this point of view and talking about her reaction to the Chauvin verdict. We feel a sigh of relief. Still, it cannot take away the pain. A measure of justice isn't the same as equal justice. This verdict brings us a step closer. And the fact is, we still have work to do. We still must reform the system. So right there you have it. Both themes and Kamala Harris, well, this is all about, we've made some progress, but we need to go more toward equity. She means, of course, racial equity. And then we need reform, reform of the system. Now, if you watch the case itself, you'll notice that race hardly ever came up. It wasn't brought up by the prosecution. It wasn't hardly brought up by the defense. It was not the basis on which the jury decided anything. And for a murder trial, that may seem strange because a murder trial generally focuses, one key element of it is motive. What made Chauvin do it? And apparently the prosecution, if they felt there was, there was proof, he's a white supremacist, he's a racist, he obviously hates blacks, they would have gone there. That would have helped their narrative. But they didn't go there at all. And so the point about it, this wasn't fundamentally about a situation of racism. Now, when I put this out on social media, someone said, well, wait a minute, Dinesh, you know, uh, you have a white cop, you've got a black victim. You know, I'm white, this person said, I'm blonde, I live in the suburbs. If me or my husband were in the same situation, we would never have been stopped. This wouldn't have happened to us. And my point is, you're showing a lack of imagination, young lady, because the fact of the matter is if, if you had a case of home invasion the previous year and if you are passing forged checks and if you are high on fentanyl and if you resisted arrest, yeah, you could very well be white and this could very well have happened to you. So you're only able to make this point by subtracting from all those facts which are relevant facts for a real comparison. This wasn't really about race. Second, what about systemic police oppression? I would submit that the whole trial, in fact, this was the prosecution's emphasis, was that the system is not to blame. Think about it, if the system were to blame, if this were systematic police oppression, they'd have, the jury would have to exonerate Chauvin. Why? Because if it were systematic police oppression, then Chauvin would have been trained to do that. And that's what the manual would tell him to do. And that's what all the other cops around him and in the department would do. But one after the other, cop after cop, and the police chief come forward and they go, listen, this is not what we trained him to do. This is not what's in the manual. This is not what other cops would do in the same situation. In other words, Chauvin is a bad apple. And that's the case for going after him. That's why the jury singled him out. Otherwise, you'd have to put the full police department into the lockup. Bottom line, what the jury decided in the Chauvin case is that A, this is not a case that has anything to do with race. That barely came up. And number two, this does not involve systematic police oppression. On the contrary, the reason Chauvin is found guilty is he behaved in a manner that a policeman is not supposed to.